This time on the UK Brewer Project, we're looking at Zest. Zest Brewery's origins actually begin under a different name, Oldershaw Brewery. So Gary Oldershaw, he started brewing with beer kits when he was age 17. Brewing hadn't been a life ambition for Gary and he was actually working full time at BT as an engineer. His decision to open a brewery came about um, after he built a small full mash brewery in an old wash house at the rear of his home in Nottingham. He felt the beer he was producing there matched and even surpassed some of the mainstream commercial beers on the market at that stage. So Gary did his research beforehand to work out the market in the local area. So contacting free of type pubs and seeing potential orders that would be available if he was to do that. In 1996, he took out a redund he took a redundancy payout of thirty thousand pounds from BT, uh, alongside moving home and using thirty thousand pounds from the sale, um, so sixty thousand in total to set up Oldershaw Brewery with his wife Diane in the garage of their new home. <laughs> so it didn't go an industrial state. It was easier, cheaper to do in the garage next door. So Gary and Diane Oldshaw founded that brewery in 1996 using a five barrel plant that was previously used at Shires Brewery in Bedfordshire. Um, the Shires Brewery, by coincidence, had also been run by two BT engineers on a part-time basis before they decided to call it quits and sold the equipment onto Gary. After many trial brews, the first beers were sold to local pubs in January 1997. The first brews were First Edition and Liberation. One of their early beers was Newton's Drop, and that's what I've got here. Um, I'll explain more about the beers and all the rest afterwards, but I'm going to go with Newton's Drop as one of their oldest beers that I've got available. So, crack that open. Oh, that is very, very active. Wow. I'm going to have to quickly cut and tidy this up. I was not expecting that. See you guys in a second. So that's the uh, first gusher we've had here on the UK Brewery Project. It's still actually a bit wet here, but that's fine. I'm going to say in their favour, these beers were only delivered yesterday and I've had them in the fridge. So perhaps they had been shook up quite a bit during transport. So I'm a bit concerned what I'm going to open next. I was planning to have two of them. So Newton's Drop is a Best Bitter, which is coming in at, I did see the APV, 4.1%. Uh, it smells like a bitter. And it tastes like a bitter, but not as much as I was expecting, which is in a good way. The nose is very malty. And I was expecting that very beery, bitter taste that you would expect, but it's actually a bit more smoother than that. So the malts are there and it's really smooth. That's miles better actually than I was perhaps expecting. I've not had any beers from them before, so this is my first taste of one of their beers. I say Newton's Drop is one of their older beers. Um, not the oldest, as I said, first edition of Liberation were their first beers, but this is the one of the oldest that I could get hold of. So let's go back to their story. So over the years, they extended the garage uh, next door to include a brewing room, a large cold store, a malt store, some office space, and a cask cleaning area for the cask beers that they were packaging and sending off to the pubs. By 2006, the brewery had a team of five people and a dog, and they were using a five and a half barrel system. So I don't know if they've changed the original five barrel system they've had, whether they replaced it, I couldn't tell, but they're now saying it's five and a half barrel, whereas originally it was five barrel. Um, but it was capable of producing 1,500 pints per brew, 
they typically brood three to four times a week, which give them an output of over a quarter of a million pints of real ale a year, which they were selling to pubs locally and in neighboring counties as well. Um, in April 2007, they installed a new nine barrel plant, which was manufactured locally by a company called Abbott's in Newark. Um, they had to make a small extension to the front of the brewery in order to install the new plant. The old five barrel plant was sold off to Tide, Tide, yeah, Tide Steam Brewery, who were based in Wisbeach in Cambridgeshire. Now, Wisbeach in Cambridgeshire is going to pop up in a future UK brewery project. That's just a little hint for one coming up. In 2007, they also received the relevant permissions to run an off license to sell bottles and casks direct to the public. Um, that's from the garage again. I've seen a video online um, on YouTube, an old video of theirs, and the bottling did seem a very manual bottling process with them having a fill-in line where they would put on four beers and it was sort of auto fill, but someone has to put them on, take them off. And then they would take it along and they'd have one of those old, well not old, but they have a large bench mounted crown uh, capper. So um, it would be just like a vice grip that put the bottle under and to cap it like that. And then someone would obviously manually apply all the labels. So it was quite a physically intensive process doing that. Um, with the nine barrel plant, they were brewing two to three times a week. So they reduced their um, actual brewing days, but they were producing around 350,000 pints a year. So they'd upped it from 250 to 350 at that stage, or they were capable of getting that high um, consistently if they wanted. In summer 2010, Kathy and Tim Britton bought out and took on the business, the recipes, the staff, including the head brewer at the time and still head brewer, I should say, Colin Church, along with the adjacent house. Because the brewery's in the garage, you've got to buy the house as well at that stage. In 2012, they moved the brewery from the garage to a small industrial uh, unit in Barkson Heath, which is only about two and a half miles north of where they were currently brewing. Um, the brewery seems at this stage to have dropped, brewing to around a quarter of a million pints a year, and it also moved into doing like food pairings and tours. Um, they seemed quite into the food at that stage. Um, they had 12 core beers and a range of seasonal. 12 seems quite high for a range of core beers for me for a smallish brewery, but they had 12. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sip of that, but use this as an opportunity to open something else. So I have, I fancy going for the hoppy one. Now I'm a bit concerned that this may be another gusher so i'm going to open it a bit slower yeah that is coming up already okay there's no two ways about it i'm going to just open it and i'll see you in a second all right so that one wasn't as bad i managed to um with the slow opening it actually made, managed to hold back a lot of it so it didn't actually spill much so definitely delivery should have left it a few days right this is their Atomic IPA, which is coming in at 5%. Um, let's, I like the design, but it's hard to actually see. Uh, well, not really. I thought it was hard, but that's just me being blind. All right. So nice golden color. A light hop nose. All right. It's not an English IPA, that's a good thing. Um, nothing against English IPAs, but I find that they're more, it's malt and bitter balance um, along with the hop in there, but hop is more for a bitterness. This is definitely, um, what would you say, international or American maybe. That's a nice hop level, but it's not overpowering. So the hops in here, are um, Citra and Apollo 
And I noticed when I picked up the bottle as well, they've got a word underneath and um, where they say IPA underneath it says intense pale ale. I believe this used to be four and a half percent because on the website they've still got pictures of it being four and a half percent. Um, so I was a bit confused when you see on the front page four and a half and then you go into the actual ordering and it's five percent but they've done that with a few of their beers changing the ABV. I want to be careful putting that back on. Um, so yeah that, that's some of their ABVs. Um, I noted as I said before that it looked like the amount they were brewing had dropped but I've also seen that they took on some contract brewing um, for a company called Brands Reunited who were doing some old, um, I skip me, some old beers, Watney's beers, I think it was, re remaking them based off the recipes. But I don't believe the numbers that they give for brewing um, actually include the ones that they made for um, Brands Reunited. So maybe they were producing more afterwards, but less of their own brand. Sadly, at the end of 2019, Aldershaw Brewery ceased trading. So over the 22 years since it was founded, it brewed three and a half thousand batches of more than 200 different beers. Um, the owners instead were going to focus on their new venture, which was a mobile bar called Bar Zest. It was called Bar Zest, which they seem to have started up in summer 2019. The bar was in a converted horse box and would operate as a pop-up bar at parties, weddings and other functions like little festivals and that. The bar seemed to sell their lager, um, I mean it seemed to sell lagers alongside um, mainstream, get my words mixed up, they seemed to sell mainstream lagers alongside some of their ca um, cask beers but the main thing seemed to be selling lagers which I guess if you go into those events that's what people are wanting perhaps. Alongside the mobile bar they also had Zest Brewery which was going to take over Aldershaw Brewery including the premises, brands, recipes. So I'm a bit confused about this part as to me it seems as they were taking a step back from the brewery due to difficult trading conditions and were looking to venture out into the wedding and party business but they were going to continue brewing on a smaller scale so they could have kept the name or announced it as a rebrand but instead they seem to have phrased it as the brewery is closing down but the same owner is going to run the brewery and produce the same beers but under a different name all sounds a bit strange to me it doesn't make sense really um unless there was something about the other brand that um i don't know about um that it was linked to something who knows i, I couldn't find anything so i think hindsight would have been handy for them at this stage because with lockdown in 2020 it seems bar zest would have would have been restricted in its activities whilst demand for beer at home had actually increased though i did see when lockdown was lifted um, they used it to sell more of their Zest Brewery beers at markets and fest little festivals, food festivals, um, which meant a nice additional avenue I guess at that stage. So the investment probably has paid off. So this is where we come to where they are now. So under, under Zest Brewery they only have four core beers. So they have um, Heavenly Blonde which was previously 3.8, but it's now 4.3. Um, that confuses me because their next one, which I don't have here and they're not selling online, was Mosaic Blonde, which is a 4.3% blonde. So has have they renamed Mosaic to this or has this gone up and they've got rid of Mosaic? I don't know. All of it confusing. Uh, Newton's Drop, which is one of the other ones, 4.1%. Anatomic IPA, as I mentioned before, which is now 5%. Seasonal-wise, they had two seasonal beers at Christmas. So they had Firecracker and Santa's Little Porter. Um, I think that this beer that I've got here, which is Dark Storm, is actually a rebrand of Santa's Little Porter. Um, it's just sort of me guessing, but it's the same ABV and um, it's also got similar writing at the bottom the rich and roasted based off the pictures that I could see for the label for the other one so it makes sense you wouldn't just have a seasonal beer for one month you would want to sell it on 
into the cold months as well. Uh, they also at the moment have blonde uh, Volta, which is a 5% blonde ale. Um, and I know they've sold that previously, I think under the original brand, not Zest. So you can see from core, four core, I mean, 12 core to four core beers. It's quite a reduction at that stage. Award-wise, the brewery's won many local SIBA and camera awards since it's founded in 1996. Um, the bigger ones to note are in 2013, uh, Regal Blonde, which they don't anymore, and the Blonde Vulture, which is now seasonal, uh, both won bronze in the SIBA regionals. And in 2013, a beer of theirs called Great Expect Expectations won silver for best bitter at SIBA nationals. Um, I'm going to take a drink. I feel like I've got a bit of a dry throat going on. Beer's going down easy though. And um, I think obviously one of the most famous awards would be Prince Charles after pulling and tasting their beer said, you can't beat a drop of Newton, you can't beat a drop of Newton's drop. Um, and yeah, I assume that will count as some sort of award to put down. But all those are under the old name. I don't see anything under the new name. And I'm a bit confused about how the brewery is running or set up at this stage. Um, but four core beers sounds a bit more sensible for a smaller venture. Um, not sure what's happened between the blondes and the beers are, I know very active and gushers, mainly I say because of delivery. It came only yesterday, 24 hours ago. That is nice for a bitter, you know, um, that's not bad, best bitter. That's not a bad IPA. They're not standout, but they're solid beers. They are well produced solid beers. Uh, first time I've had them, as I said, and they are really good. I'm interested to see what the blonde is like, but I'll probably more than likely be having the porter next, or maybe I'll leave it a few days actually. Um, I can't see this being more carbonated than rest, but I'll leave this a few days anyways, both of those, before I drink them. But this is perfect for the cold weather of winter, which sounds strange, but that's what it is outside right now. In a few weeks when you see this, it may not be. So, well, I've got to finish with a drink. I'll take the IPA, Intense Pale Ale. What's that again? I can't remember I've seen words. Yeah, Intense Pale Ale. And I'll see you next UK Brewery Project. Take care, guys.